Hello and a very warm welcome to this special show to which we want to shine the spotlight on the growing stature of Indian women in sport particularly at the Olympics. As you will know that at the recently concluded Tokyo Olympics uh, out of the seven medals won by Indians three were won by women. And that is not to mention athletes like Aditi Ashok and the women's hockey team which came within a hair's breadth of winning a medal. Uh, the rise of India's women in sports has been captured by a report in PWC which became the launch pad for this conversation. Uh, with me to talk about this is Neha Agarwal Sharma who competed at Beijing Olympics and currently works for Olympic Gold Quest where she's uh, played a role in the success stories of countless Indian athletes from PV Sindhu to Mary Com. Uh, Neha, uh, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for taking the time out and doing this with us. Thank you so much, Amit. Really appreciate that and excited to be here. Okay. Uh, Neha, I wanted to ask you, uh, back, back in the days when you went to the Olympics, uh, Beijing 2008 to 2022, whatever we've seen in Tokyo, uh, how has the scenario kind of changed for... Uh, you know, women in Indian sport particularly, and particularly uh, with the lens of the Olympics. Yeah, I think uh, we have come a long, long way, Amit. Uh, when I was playing, uh, you know, back in, I played at the 2008 Beijing Olympics. And, uh, you know, if you take my sport, table tennis in particular, um, the fact that I qualified uh, for the Olympics uh, itself was a big deal. Um, you know, we sort of celebrated that. Uh, it was uh, after a long time, somebody from Delhi had qualified, um, you know, for the Olympics in in, in table tennis. Uh, and, uh, uh, you know, so these were our wins. And now fast forward to 2021, uh, where, uh, you know, Manika Batra played the round of 32 and which is quite mm -hmm. a big deal, right? So I think uh, just in terms of the performances, if, if you see, you just captured it really well that, uh, uh, you know, we've had medals, uh, but we've also had many fourth places finishes. We've also had many firsts, right? Say in fencing with Bhavani Devi, right. in singing with Netra mm -hmm. Kumaran and, um, uh, we've just come a long way and i think uh, overall as as a society uh, we are uh, the acceptance for women to play sport has increased um, the awareness has increased of course the funding uh, from the various stakeholders has in increased massively uh, but also i would like to mention the change in the mindset Right. When I was playing at that time, um, for, for, for a young girl to, you know, play sport and say play a sport like table tennis, where you don't even know what it is, right? Mostly it's like a basement sport, uh, ping pong, tuck tuck, you know, like people say what not. And now here we're we're doing serious competitive sports. So the mindset towards uh, you know, the the parents and schools and at the grassroots to um help uh you know their their daughters play sport i think that's changing and we're just progressed immense and i only see uh you know a better future for women's sport in india right uh you know you spoke about the mindset uh i, I was just look we have these stats where which say that uh at 2000 india had uh the first woman uh, to win a medal uh, at the olympics it took 12 years for another woman to come win a medal and at that uh, in at that olympics there were two medalists suddenly since then every successive olympics that we've had we've had multiple uh, women winning medals uh, what do you see is the reason for that like did karna maleshwari's medal kind of give a lot of young women also hope uh, that you know that they can also go ahead and do this Oh, absolutely. Uh, you know, the biggest thing for sport, I feel, is to have role models, right? To have those breakthrough performances, which gives uh, young girls uh, and their coaches and their parents the, the vision and the sight uh, that they too can do it. And to win an Olympic medal is, uh, is a 
you know a long journey and thus you would see performances in only in successive olympic games um, um you know although we did not win any of the women did not win medals in 20 2004 and 2008 but if you see the participation had increased uh saina nehwal in 2008 uh you know we she was uh, she was a medal contender over there so uh, you have to factor in uh, performances uh not only just medal winning but otherwise and absolutely the these women have been trail blazers from 2012 onwards you know they say it's our women who have actually held our uh, head high at the olympics so the narrative itself has changed and we need these role models to um you know give our younger generation the belief that if they have won they too um you know can do it uh you just mentioned the narrative uh, about how the narrative has changed and even in the in a previous answer you were telling me about how uh, you know this this perception that was there for table tennis uh when you wanted to play table tennis there was a certain way it was perceived how has that kind of changed over the years uh, not just table tennis i mean uh, for other sports also because uh, in your work uh, with ogq i'm sure you see in all of these uh, athletes in sports which are you know very physically demanding there's weight lifting uh, meera doing a great job in weight weight lifting there's mary doing a great job in boxing these are all very physical sports that uh, i don't know if a few decades ago parents would have wanted their kids to you know go play these sports so can you just talk to us a little bit about that change in my narrative yeah and uh, absolutely right you summed it so well and not to forget the success of the women's hockey team as well right the biggest uh, uh, defining factor for them was the physical fitness and back then right we would see our indian women as timid not too confident not too physically strong right because i think uh, the advancement in sports science had not come until then in india there were only a particular few sports where you would have the best uh, strength and conditioning trainers the best uh, psychologist or uh, physios working with these athletes now what i have seen is that not only at the elite level but also at uh, you know the mid and the grassroots level the awareness that uh, you know fitness is a key component uh, for any sport right that matter to be successful that has changed we now have much more knowledge much more uh, scientific approach uh towards this um just as a quick example um you know uh, i mean i can take my example um i would say my approach towards fitness of uh, you know what it was between 2001 and 2010 versus say 12 13 and 14 in my you know uh, ending years of my career that itself changed right it was only in the fag end of my career i had a dedicated uh, fitness trainer uh, i knew there is uh, you know something called a uh, physiotherapy there is an importance uh, t- okay. attached to it i need a masher uh, you know in my uh, you know de- in my planning so uh, that awareness increased only for me in in the later stages of my career and um, if you see that that has improved uh which has also led to uh i think increase in the longevity of of these women playing sport right, right? you see a mary com right uh, uh 38 years old mother of four who's still <laughs> you know at peak of her fitness a lot of work has been done in uh in at the back end with with a, a trainer a physiotherapist and a nutritionist uh to you know keep her up at that level uh, in table tennis uh you know if you see uh longevity has definitely improved uh well say if in the men's uh, uh scenario as well right sharat is uh, is 39 sharat kamal and you know he's uh, uh you know he's still at the peak of his career so overall we see uh, uh that improved and uh, certainly it gives the confidence that the uh, the the playing career is not until till 28 30 that's not when you end it right you can go beyond so that also gives right. a lot of confidence to um you know the players and and coaches and parents to invest in the sport it's not a short term thing that you can do you can and if you do it right the planning is right you certainly can um sort of have a long career and achieve success in that right uh 
Neha, this uh, whole conversation was brought about because uh, of the new PWC report that has come in about the state of Indian, uh, you know, women, Indian women in uh, sport, particularly Olympics. Uh, and if you look at some of the numbers uh, in the PWC report itself, uh, it's astounding that a country like China have, has actually sent 70% women uh, to the to Tokyo. And uh, you look at the other numbers where, you know, you look at some of the top nations in the world. You had uh, USA where women have won around, I think, 23 gold medals uh, from the 39 uh, gold they've won. And this, this this trend is the same for China and Japan. Uh, so this, this seems to be like a, you know, concerted effort from every country to push for more increased participation in women, right? Yeah, I myself was really astounded to see that uh, this report and uh, uh, what was equally nice to see the, um, uh, you know, the increased participation from India. Uh, also, the push from the International Olympic Committee to make it uh, an equal Olympics. Uh, this was the Tokyo Olympics was the first ever Olympics which had equal representation from both uh, men and women. Sure. And uh, I think it, uh, you know, uh, these changes, right, uh, they don't happen overnight. There has to be a systematic uh, uh, effort, a systematic push uh, that is being done from various, uh, you know, levels. Uh, I remember when um, I went, after I retired, I uh, went to uh, uh, Columbia uh, University to do my master's in sports management, right? right? And there I had many, many, uh, you know, different professionals from different countries. And that's when I actually realized the issue of women's sport uh, being true to many nations. I had always thought that uh, this is uh, an issue only in India. Uh, but it was right. so astounding for me to see uh, accomplished countries like the US, uh, Germany, um, you know, uh, 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 Australia. They all struggle to send more, um, uh, you know, uh, sending more women to the Olympic is a mandate. So for me, that was an eye opener. Yeah. And uh, it's just uh, heartwarming to see the participation increase. Um, the number of medals to offer has increased and thus uh, you know medal winning performances as well and not only to mention just the olympics right even at the commonwealth and asian games level you're seeing increased uh, um, you know participation and medal winners as young as somebody uh, 16 17 years old and that's just incredible to see right uh yeah just to sum up uh i know you said that you know there has to be a more concerted push uh to get women into sport and uh, we, looking at the numbers we can obviously see that there is a rise between from where we were in 2000 to now in terms of participation in terms of medals all of it uh, but what is it that uh, federations or the government also uh, should be doing more i mean there is obviously a an increase things have gotten much better since 2000 maybe but what are the areas that you see that things can get even better for uh, getting more women into sport and getting them to perform better at the Olympics? Yeah, I think uh, one of the very critical elements is, um, you know, confidence. How will that come in where we have support from various angles, right? Um, uh, I think from uh, an employment standpoint, if you see uh, a lot of our women uh, athletes now are employed in PSUs, which which is a great, great right. motivating factor because all our major athletes, right, uh, come from families where, um, you know, having a safe, secure job is also a key criteria for them. So that is one. Uh, second is uh, recognition, right? Uh, I think that's got a massive, massive boost, um, you know, uh, uh, say the, the awards, the national sports awards that are given uh, at various levels, uh, right? That is being given to women athletes and it's only on merit right it, it really doesn't matter you're a male or a female it's given on merit and again that Correct. that reinforces the belief uh, uh, of in success third i feel like 
uh, more important is uh, the scientific approach to training uh, what can uh, get better is that if we can get uh, more co- more women coaches right more women physiotherapists more trainers more uh, you know scientific approach in terms of uh, specific training that is required for women athletes say for example take uh, the the topic of menstruation right uh, till now right. girls probably don't know how to um, um, you know uh, channelize their bodies and what are the best practices in a way to manage their periods and uh, you know uh, uh, be be successful as an athlete while managing these things really well i think a push on these levels can really boost information uh, knowledge uh, in, at at a you know at a grassroots level which only increases your confidence in sport to me that is very very critical uh, and and together if you know we can get better in all these aspects right um, you know having a women coach it's always so important because you you can sort of, sh- sort of you know share comfort um, you know and 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 you know just just talk more it just helps uh, better so i think uh, these things give more confidence and uh, this will only increase participation and you know increase participation will definitely lead to um, you know a, a, a bigger pool of women athletes that are that are just playing sport that's i think the what the mandate is and uh, will definitely seek success because i do believe that women are far more stronger far more resilient and uh, they do make it happen uh, than as compared to men because we're just born we we're, we're, we're fighters right so um uh, mm-hmm. and now the opportunities that are um that are given are uh you know there there are going to equal so i do hope and pray that these are the some some other things can also get better which will reinforce more confidence for women in sport right uh, on on that hopeful note uh, i think this is a great uh, note to end the show uh, thank you so much for taking the time out and doing this uh, neha thank you thank you so much uh, amit and i do hope to see much more success for our uh, women athletes in the future thank you